Are you the new campus statue? I passed here an hour ago when you were as is. Oh, no. I'm waiting for Eddie. He promised to meet me. What some dames will do for a sap freshman. I wouldn't trust that guy any further than I could throw a piano. Please don't talk that way, Jim. Eddie's the only boy on the campus who can make my heart do setting up exercises. But lately, I don't know, something's gotten into him. Another woman? I don't know. But we used to have a date every Wednesday night. Yeah, now every Wednesday night, that guy acts as mysterious as an attic in a haunted house. Funny part of it is, none of the fellas at the fraternity house know who the girl is. Gee, if she'd only come out in the open and fight me with a woman's weapon. Well, if it's another woman, she's certainly drawing a blank. Jim, you're one of Eddie's closest friends, aren't you? Next to his underwear, I guess I'm about as close as anything. Won't you try to help me out? Find out who it is, will you? Now, don't you worry. I'm going to get everything fixed up for you, Doc. But please don't get Eddie into any jam. Well, I'm afraid Eddie's in the jam already, baby. And it may be raspberry. Where is the spirit of medieval knighthood? Are you red-blooded he-men going to sit by and see a poor little girl like Dot get to run around from a freshman? Oh. Well, then, if any of you guys know anything about this mysterious lady of the evening, Wednesday evening, to be exact, speak up. All I know is that he rushes back here every Wednesday night and writes her a love letter. Aha! And which desk does he use? That one. Well, that's simple. With a sheet of white paper and a sheet of carbon paper underneath the blotter, we have a copy of the boy's love sonnet. Ah, the mastermind speaking. <laughs> Fresh, go in the kitchen, get me a box of rice and a pair of scissors. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll cut a hole in Eddie's pocket, fill it with rice, then we can trail him. And that will be the rice and fall of Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 boy. All right, boys. Now for the dirty work. And now allow me to present our guest star, Miss Ruth Eaton who's making her last appearance on the air as she is opening tomorrow night with the new Follies in Rochester. Miss Eaton. Love came along, sang a song of all that it would bring. How wonderful, how sweet my life would be. Don't let him get on. 
on, Lula. Quiet down now, everybody. to mail a letter to Dad for another check. Oh, yeah? Now we get the lowdown. Lowdown is right. Can you imagine that vagabond lover giving Dot the runaround for a voice? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't even know the dame it was attached to. Boy, we'll fix him. Say, Harold, can you write like a dame? Who, me? I should say not. Can you, Dick? No. I can write like a dame. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, sit down and take a letter. Whose writing do you want? Cleopatra's or Madame Pompadour? <laughs> I'm not proud, but make it plenty sexy. Shoot. Uh, my dear Eddie, I was very happy to hear from you again. Please come down to the stage door when the Follies is in town Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> and sign it, uh, your room. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Dick. Hello, Eddie. Dick, you're a pretty good friend of mine, and I'm not telling this to everyone, but I guess I won't be around here very much longer. Why not? Where are you going, Ed? Well, a big turning point is coming to my life, and I've got to be prepared to meet it. Is it a woman? I'm not telling everything. Well, congratulations, or whatever it is. I'm expecting big things from you in this world, my boy. Thanks, Dick. Hello, Jim. Hello, Eddie. Jim, you're a pretty good friend of mine. And I'm not telling this to everyone, but I guess I won't be around here very much longer. What's up? Well, from the looks of things, I guess... Oh, I'll... now, Eddie, don't tell me you're leaving us. Well, from the looks of things, I might have to. Is another woman? Well, we won't go into that. Oh, gee, Eddie, I'll bet you've got a raft of dames up your sleeve. You're wrong. I believe in this life, a man should only... Well, you'll find out about it. I imagine Dot will take it pretty hard, you're leaving. Oh, she'll get over it. Women are like that. I'm going over now and kiss her goodbye. Well, take a tip from me, Eddie. Think twice and look before you lip. Hello. Dot, you're a pretty good friend of mine, and I'm not telling this to everyone, but I guess I won't be around here very much longer. Why, Eddie? Dot, a big turning point has come into my life. I'm a man who believes that the only way to meet the crisis of life is to look them square in the face. Well, what is it, Eddie? It's something grand, an ethereal vision swept in on a cloud of fantasy. Have you ever had anyone in your life who could make every nerve in your body vibrate in rhythm? Yes. My dentist. Oh, Dot, with you, nothing is sacred. Here, read this letter I got from her. Love like death levels all ranks and lays the shepherd's crook beside the scepter. Ruth Eaton? Yes, the Ruth Eaton. You're playing around? I'm not playing around. I'm serious. Gee, Eddie, I don't know what to say. I'm awfully impressed, and I'm awfully hurt. Don't be that away, Doc. You'll learn to forget. And if I choose to love Ruth, that's my prerogative. And I guess I can exercise my prerogative if I want to. <laughs> yes, but not with other women. <laughs> Sadie, I wish you'd get me another eyebrow pencil. Yes, ma'am. Who is it? Young lady to see Miss Eaton. Can't see nobody. She says she's got to see her. What's her name? What's it about? What does she want? She says it's important. All right. Right this way, Miss. How do you do? Are you a, a Miss Eaton? Yes. What is it? Well, Miss Eaton, I came to see you about a very delicate matter that concerns us both. It's about, uh, well, it's about Eddie. Who? Eddie Blake. My slippers, please, Sadie. I'm sorry, my dear, but I don't know any Eddie Blake. Oh, Miss Eaton, please try to see it my way. You have everything, money and clothes, and you must have a lot of men, Miss Eaton. Why don't you give Eddie back? He doesn't really love you. He can't. He just thinks that he does. 
Can't you understand? I told you I don't know any Eddie Blake. Well, he wrote you. Well, thousands of people write me, child. Look at all that mail. But you wrote to him, too. He showed me the letter. Can't you see? I need him. Without Eddie, my life is a vast emptiness. And he even gave me his paternity pin. And you know what that means. That's serious. Gee, honey, somebody's just been kidding you. No! Why, I'm not interested in your Eddie. And I have one very good reason for not being. And here it is. Right here. Oh! He's a cat! I mean, he's lovely. Much better looking than Eddie. I mean, a different type. Eddie's more my type. Sadie, will you see who that is? Know what I mean? I think I do. Eddie Blake. Well, here he is. Are you going to see him? Yes. Well, I send him in. I thought you said you didn't know Eddie. Well, you want him, don't you? More than anything in the world. Then you just leave this to me. Do you smoke? No, not yet. I'm just in my freshman year. Here's my holder and cigarettes. Sadie, take one of my evening gowns and go in the other dressing room and fix this young lady up. Oh, yes. And orchids. Orchids are always well, good. I, uh, I run along, run along. Well, here I am, baby. How do I look to you? Are you Mr. Blake? Yeah, and thanks very much for the picture. I brought you one of mine, too. Mmm, well. Your letter was the most wonderful moment in my life. Oh, now somebody's just been trying to show you a good time. I didn't write you any letter. And the picture, there's only one in my dressing room. My husband. You mean you're married? Mm-hmm. Gee, I guess I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry, too. On the sea valley is on, Miss Eaton, next. There's my cue. I'm on now. And you stay here. I have a little surprise for you. Once I dressed in silk and lace on the Rolls Royce too, had a gorgeous country place and diamonds quite a few. Now around the kitchen sink, happy as can be. I'm in love and love to think that he's in love with me. He's not much to look at. And nothing to see, he is just as plain and poor as can be. Why do I love him? Mm, I don't know. I'm funny that way. Had chances of being some rich man's wife. Live in a mansion the rest of my life. Why do I go through hardship and strife? I'm funny that way. When he sees me saving just to keep up our home, he says I'd be better off to leave him alone. But why? Why should I go? He'd be unhappy without me, I know. Cause he's just my man. And I love him so. I'm funny that way. We never had nothing. And what is more, I see my future. There's nothing in store. Why do I stick then? Oh, just because I'm funny that way. When he says he's sorry, he's 
dragging me down Keeps me from having the best things in town I simply answer, ha ha, don't be a clown I'm funny that way How oh, he hurts me when he says that he has a plan it all and let me go to some better man. But I'm only human, a coward at best. Why I'm more than certain I'd follow him well. That would be crazy. Well, maybe it would. Will you do a little something for me, just to make a couple of kids happy? Sure. I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine, and here's your chance to be an actor instead of a hooker. <laughs> I'm going to put on an act for her boyfriend, and when I buzz you, take your cue and come into my room. It's easy. You're an English banker. What, with five dollars between me and the gutter? Yes, and you're going to take her out. She's in my sitting room. Now, you go around and get acquainted with her, and I'll see you later. Right, Al. Gee, Miss Eaton, you were swell. I'm sorry about that letter and everything. Oh, that's all right. I'd ask you to stay a bit longer, but I'm dining out with some friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, oh, I say that. Well, come right in, folks. Doc, I never knew that you... There are a lot of things I've never told you, Eddie. Jolly evening. This is Mr. Blake, Mr. Hemingway. Charmed, I'm sure. Doc, you ought to be ashamed of yourself going out with that, that monocle. Eddie, you have no right to talk to me that way. Haven't I? Take that cigarette out of your mouth. Please, Mr. Blake, where are your manners just because you know the young lady? Know her? She's my girl. I was your girl. Here's your fraternity pin. You don't want to do that. You see, there's a bunch of college hoodlums outside raising an offer up. It's the gang. They wrote that letter, and they're out to give me the words. Don, you go through the front of the theater. Eddie and I'll see you in the drugstore in 20 minutes. And, Hemi, it's off to Buffalo for you, and thanks. Okay, Ruthie. What's the big idea? <laughs> Freshmen don't ask questions. See you in the drugstore. Goodbye, Miss Eaton. I've lived and learned. Could I borrow this pillow if I brought it back? Eddie, you don't think I'd let those boys make a sap out of you, do you? Come on, we'll give them the surprise of their lives. Miss Eaton's car. I'll stand here and catch him when he comes out. Don't catch him, let him bounce. <laughs> You know, Ruth, the hors d'oeuvres at the campus grill are delectable this year. Oh. 